it's broken and it's like you don't even know how to fix it. I mean, what do you do? You reduced calories to the point where, okay, now I'm not losing weight anymore. What am I supposed to do? Just keep reducing calories until I'm eating 500 calories per day. It's, you know that that's not gonna work. You know that's not the right way, but something tells you to keep doing it because what else are you going to do? You could start exercising more, but then you're just burning more calories and putting yourself in the same kind of situation. Well, it's not the end all be all. There are potential ways that you can sort of resurrect a metabolism that has been crashed a little bit. And I think this day and age, our generation has probably wrecked our metabolisms quite a bit because we have lived through various different diet fads and we have all lived through like a period of time where different diet fads have been pushed on us, forcing us to kind of crash our metabolisms or we've been forced to exercise it to the nth degree while also being in a deficit. It is a proper balance of being able to put yourself in a deficit to trigger the proper metabolic effect there, but it also comes with a balance of being able to eat more and exercise more. And repairing your metabolism is not just as simple as, oh, I'm gonna take a diet break and eat more calories and sit on my bum. Okay, there's a lot more to it than just that. And it comes down to something called G-flux. G-flux is the energy flux. And I've got some interesting data to share with you. Essentially what it implies is that if you move more and eat more, you will be in a better metabolic position than someone that just reduces calories and doesn't also add more activity. So let me paint a picture for you. If you were to look at two different people, and I've talked about this in another video, one person was consuming 2,000 calories per day and burned 2,000 calories per day, and person B consumed 3,000 calories per day and burned 3,000 calories per day, you would say that both people would be at maintenance and stay at the same weight, right? Wrong. The person that eats more and exercises more, even though they are at maintenance, they will probably lose more because of energy turnover. It's called energy flux. So I'm gonna jump right into one interesting study that was published in the journal Clinical Nutrition, ESPEN, from Dr. Chris Melby, who is one of the most well-renowned, respected researchers in the world of metabolic health. He's awesome. Okay. This study took a look, it was a small study, but it took a look at six obese people. And these six obese people, they had them go ahead and aggressively lose weight. They lost about 7% of their body weight over the course of a few months. And they were trying to sort of replicate kind of the metabolic damage that can occur with weight loss because it just does happen. When we reduce weight, when we lose weight, our metabolism slows down. So they did that first, then they had them stabilized for a few weeks. And then here's what they did. They divided these people into two groups. One group was a sedentary group that just reduced their calories, okay? They, they just didn't do any additional activity, they just kept calories relatively low, and they weren't allowed to move around a whole lot, okay? The other group, they said, we're gonna have you exercise to burn 500 extra calories, but guess what? We're gonna feed you extra calories so that you're at maintenance, okay? You would look at this and you would say, well, the people that are reducing calories or you know, they're probably gonna lose more weight or at least stay the same, and the group that's eating more, well, they're probably gonna do the same. Well, no, it was different. They found after just four days, the resting metabolic rate of the group that increased activity and increased food went up to 1,926 calories, resting metabolic rate per day in just four days. And the group that was sedentary with lower calories but didn't exercise and didn't add more calories to compensate, their metabolic rate was down to 1,826. This is only just four days and you already have a delta of 80 calories between the two. So repairing your metabolism is about the energy flux and the mechanism is pretty interesting because what happens is when you reduce calories, of course you have a reduction in your overall metabolic rate because you're reducing calories. Everything just kind of slows down, okay? But when you are moving more, not only do you potentially build muscle, not only do you potentially have more you know, nutrient partitioning and more overall just energy flux there, but you're also possibly building muscle and having this whole metabolic drive that is increased. The energy flux, okay, the energy that it just takes for movement in general, like the actual law of energy, that alone is going to burn calories and that alone can activate what's called the sympathetic nervous system. This activation of the sympathetic nervous system then triggers more activation of uh, like hormone sensitive lipase, fat burning processes because you're increasing adrenaline and epinephrine. It seems as though we are designed to be moving more and eating more. 
So what exactly do you do? Here's the kind of step-by-step -step thing. You're in this position where you're stuck, okay? You increase your calories, but you do not just increase your calories. Increase your calories, 200 calories. Just try it, okay? But you have to commit to also exercising those additional 200 calories, okay? So you can even increase to 500, but I would recommend starting small. Go 200 calories for a week, more per day. 200 calories per day more, but also move a few thousand steps more per day. Okay, so if you factor in how many calories you're going to be burned per 1,000 steps, then you can do a lot, right? And I'm not going to give you the breakdown there because it's going to be different based on weight, but you could literally go on Google and you could figure that out. You could figure out, okay, I weigh this much, how many calories do I burn with X number of steps? Because what I would rather you do is rather than just say, go on a stationary bike and burn 200 calories, I'd rather you just burn 200 more calories throughout the course of the day. Now, the interesting thing is when we look at that AGCN study that I mentioned earlier, the perceived hunger was quite a bit lower too in the group that was exercising more and eating more, probably because they felt like they were able to eat more. They're like, I don't feel like this is a big deal. I feel like I'm moving around a little bit more and heck, I get to eat 500 more calories. That makes my brain happy, makes my body happy, and it makes me feel like I can sustain this for a long time. Plus, you get the benefit of constantly keeping the body moving. One of the things that you can do to sort of piggyback additionally off of what we learned in this study is you could also, when you do consume calories, consume calories from protein. Okay, 20% of the calories that you consume from protein are allocated just to metabolizing that protein. So what I mean by that is protein calories burn some calories. It takes a lot of energy to metabolize protein. So I put a link down below for today's video sponsor. If you ever do protein shakes, I always recommend getting whole foods whenever possible, but there are periods of time where you need convenience and need a shake. So Sun Warrior has these really cool new shakes called their Active Line. Okay, their Active Line shakes have pea protein. They also have pumpkin seed protein which is really cool stuff. So you're getting a nice blend of plant-based protein in there that I love, plus you're getting some of the fibers that also take additional digestion, but they also have some probiotics and some enzymes in there to make digestion a little bit easier. So that way you're getting the muscle repair, you're getting the things that you need, but you're also getting some of the things that allow that potential nutrient partitioning to actually take place. So I put that link down below. You can save 20% off of your Sun Warrior products by using that link down below. They've been a sponsor on this channel for a long time, and then if you're doing lower carb, this product will work, their active protein line works, but also their Sun Warrior Warrior Blend is a hemp and pea blend that only has a couple grams of net carbs. So definitely recommend that you check them out. That link is down below to save 20% off your order with them. So check them out. Another thing that we have to factor in is that our muscles are secretory organs, meaning they secrete myokines. They secrete signals that keep things moving. The more muscle we have, and the more that we move said muscle, the more consistent relevance is being communicated to the brain saying maintain this muscle and burn fat. Okay, so it is definitely a goal that we should have to be able to be at maintenance calories at a higher level. So what you would continue to do is the next week bump it up to 400 or 300 maybe if you want to just go incrementally. 300, 400 more calories but add more activity in and probably stop at 500. Don't start going up 1,000 or 2,000 because then you might break your body down. But eventually, you get to a point where, yes, I can eat 3,000 calories per day because A, my basal metabolic rate has increased, so that's accounting for something, and then B, you're also able to exercise more, and that's going to account for something. This is going to repair your metabolism much more than just taking a diet break, eating a bunch of calories, and sitting on your bum like I mentioned before. And it's definitely going to be better at overall weight loss for the long term than just reducing calories and hoping that you can continue to reduce forever and ever and ever. Now, the important piece is you have to balance this with periods of a deficit, okay? The reason that I say that is you don't always want to be burning hot and dying young. Okay, that's kind of like the analogy that we say, is if you are exercising and moving a lot, yes, you are keeping a body moving, but we've seen in studies with the Okinawans in Japan that calorie restriction is great for longevity and great for cellular repair and great for overall uh, signaling and great for telomeres and great for all kinds of different things that have to do with like insulin resistance and pieces like that. So it is good to still periodically 
take a break and have a aggressive deficit, have some kind of an aggressive deficit that puts you into the stage where you're upregulating different processes within the body. This is the perfect example with things like intermittent fasting, where you are still consuming enough calories throughout the course of the day, but they're just in a consolidated window. But then you have periods of time where you are putting yourself in a deficit so that you get the cellular effect of that. We are not just putting you in a deficit to lose weight. Okay, I would much rather have tissues just doing that in the background all the time. The deficit should be calculated in this case. In modern society, the deficit should be calculated for cellular health, for rejuvenation, for overall autophagy and cellular just repair. So we want to have periods of time where we do put ourselves in a deficit, but we don't want to do them for extended periods of time like we would with traditional caloric restriction. So what it could look like in terms of general context is maybe you go four days per week where you're consuming 3,000 calories a day and burning 3,000 calories per day. And then maybe you take three days per week where you cut calories down a little bit more by doing some intermittent fasting and have a slightly less caloric window, a slightly uh, smaller eating window in which your calories would be a little bit less. This way you're getting the best of both worlds. You're having high AMPK signaling, you're having all the benefits that come with intermittent fasting and caloric restriction for longevity, for overall cellular signaling, but then you're also getting the high metabolic drive. Because if we are constantly eating a lot and moving a lot, we also have a lot of uh, what's called oxidative damage that occurs. Okay, People that are athletes and do a lot of endurance work can sometimes have higher degrees of oxidative stress because that's just a lot of turnover on the body. The more turnover, the more waste, right? So we need periods of time to be able to balance that. And that is a huge part for long-term insulin sensitivity and long-term mitochondrial and metabolic health. So you can't just look at one side. One group is going to look at intermittent fasting all the time, fasting all the time, longevity, let me live forever, yada, 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 yada. Not always the case, right? Because if you only look at that one side, then you're just reducing metabolic drive, you're reducing that piece, you're not looking at the other piece, which is movement. That is life. Staying moving is life. And that's going to continue to make the body know that every tissue in your body is still relevant. So find that balance, repair the metabolism, and keep it repaired for a long time so you can do it for a long time. I'll see you tomorrow.